Good afternoon and welcome to the second part of our 156th episode of Treaty Talk. Myself, Jack Neville and Matt O'Callaghan of the Weekly Observer and Vale Star. This part of the pod will look exclusively at the Hurling and the Camogie this weekend um, with huge quarterfinals in the Senior Intermediate Championships. There's semi-finals in the Premier Intermediate and um, there's the fifth round of the Junior A Championship. The second round of games in the Camogie Championship and obviously Colin Ryan becoming the fifth ever Limerick man to win the National Puck Father Championship. So change, stay tuned for all that. The impression again game, you get old with what you put into. It's like a walk of life. If you're good enough, go and get it, no more about it. But not so much control in the centre of the field from Phil Kenny as Richie Bennett sends it high and over the bar. Your mother sends you down to the shop for a pound worth of goods and she gives you 50 pence. You can't get the pounds worth of goods, can you? Just about kept in. Oh, what a shot in To do that to Tomas O'Shea. He deserves to score from here. One of the highlights. Let me spend out there from the war court today. No more about him. He made all the run. That was it. Put the ball over the barrel, the back of it, and that's it. No ifs, no buts. Is there much time left? We have a couple of injuries. Here comes Kieran Curry. Curry leading the charge of the Black Brigade. 45 minutes out. He's a chance to score. He's put it right. There's no sympathy in this game for anybody. <laughs> I <laughs> you're laughing again. I suppose for anyone that's tuning in um, after watching the football pod yesterday, this is pre-recorded straight after the football pod. So if you're wondering why they're not changing their clothes, um, this is a pre-recording. So don't hope you worry about that. My, my hat is a bit. permanent fixture, Jack. It is a permanent fixture. Although we released the photos um, from our book launch, which we talked about recently, and I was I was kind of out. I couldn't see you talking. I could hear you obviously, but I couldn't see you talking. I was actually surprised that you weren't wearing your hat on the day. I don't know why that was. No one guess. Someone robbed the Especially, Bellistine, especially for Bellistein. Yeah, well, those photos are available on Bellistein's Facebook page. If anyone wants to have a look at Matt, I think there might be one of me and the lads, maybe. There's a good few of us reading the book, actually, but we talked about it in a recent podcast. If you want to get that book, the Skeeton Bellistein J story, it's available yeah. in Sintran and Skeeton. There, I think there, there, there are few, very few photographs of the back row hecklers. <laughs> yeah, we were all at the back anyway, heckling. Um, the book is available in, in loads of places in the Skeeton Top of Town if you want to get a pint as well, but that's not the focus. Today's focus will be solely on Hurling and Camogie, and I suppose we'll start straight away, Matt, um, with the double header in the Senior Hurling Championship, um, the quarter finals on Sunday. Adair and Patrick Swell at four o'clock. We'll start with South Liberties and Kilmallock at two pm. And I suppose in the grand scheme of the team are things, Matt, since we got Section A and Section B, we're yet to see a Section B team winning. Now, South Liberty's up against us. They obviously drew or lost to Gary Splane after a first round win. But um, Kilmallock didn't really pull up any trees in the, the group stages. They obviously lost to Piercing and beat Bally Brown by the skin of their teeth in the end. Can there be an upset this weekend, do you think? Um, I don't think so. Um, uh, for the last couple of years since this came in, and we, we, we have been talking. Um, if the gap can be closed and, um, you, you know, the quarterfinals is one great barometer for, for determining whether the, the gap can be closed. But despite being involved in a relegation battle over the weekend, I think to a certain degree that, that um, uh, I thought in the game against Kilmallock in particular that, that Bally Brown uh, went somewhere towards closing the gap now they did have a definite disappointing result against Napiersik. There was it, it was a back down to earth business with Napiersik. So um, um, I don't think there'll be a surprise. Um, I, I, I'm, you know, Kilmallock certainly didn't root up any trees um, in 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 the um, in the group stages. They were beaten. Um, by Napiersik, beaten by 10 points. Now, um, they were within three points of Napiersik with as many minutes left. So it was a late flurry. Probably would have distorted the scoreline somewhat. And um, as you rightly said, they were put to the pin of their collar to beat, to, to beat um, uh, Bally Brown. Um, but like, I, I, I have respect for what Bally Brown have done. You know, the way they went down, re regrouped. Um, they were they, you know, and they've 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 come up. Um, now, all right, you you can say you're as good as your last game, and that last game was a poor outing. You'd have to say against them, um, against Napier Sheik, but ne ne nevertheless, um, 
Uh, now, if, if, if you turn to um, South Liberties, um, great win after flying start with a huge win over Black Rock, but suddenly brought back down to by Gary Spillane in, 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 in the second round. So if, you know, um, which would have been a disappointment for him now, I know there was a couple of key players, most notably Tomas and, and, and Brian Ryan missing um, for the first half against Gary Spillane. They were introduced in the second half. Um, so, but I, I think this is not going to be, it's not going to be a gimme for Kilmanock. I, 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 I think um, South Liberties are quite capable of, of pushing Kilmallock and pushing, pushing, pushing them pretty hard. Um, like you, 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 you look at the Kilmallock team and you, you, you see that the, you know, you, you see it littered with with um, medal winners, All Ireland medal winners in the shape of of, of um, Barry Hennessy, um, Alan Costello, Robbie Handley, Oshin O'Reilly, and of course. Um, you know, the biggest name of all and, and, and the Kilmallock team, Graham Mulcahy, who hasn't featured in the championship this year, but there is optimism surrounding his 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 participation in, in Sunday's quarterfinal, which would be a huge boost to, to, to Kilmallock. And like you know, it, it it's simplistic to say it that Kilmallock are a different team when he's on the t- on, on the field. But but that's the way it is, Jack. He, he's, he's, he's such a huge influence. So were he to be back, um, it, it will be a much stronger Kilmallock. Um, Kilmallock also had to rejig going into the Bally Brown game because of the late withdrawal of Dan Joy. Now, Dan Joy is an All-Ireland medal winner as well in his own right. Um, an All-Ireland under-21 medal winner in, in, in 2017. And then you have Kevin O'Donnell, who's been... Such a servant to Kilmallock for for almost a decade now, and um, he he only played cameo, he only made cameo appearances in 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 the two games to date, try, trying to shake off an injury. Were Kilmallock to be at full strength, um, and um, I, I I think they're optimistic that they will be near it. Now they're going to be without Phelan O'Reilly. Because Phelan O'Reilly has gone abroad um, on, on a work assignment for two months, so he he will be a loss, and they, 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 they'll have to plug that gap. But if they were to plug that gap with Graham Mulcahy, it it it, it would be a, a huge huge boost for for them. Now, like, you you know you have so many players on that Kilmallock team that are that are used to winning them. There there, there are lads on that Kilmallock team that have pocketed. Um, Three county senior medals. They pocketed monster, uh, monster senior medal. Played it. Played in an All Ireland final. And I'm talking about the Barry Hennessys. I'm talking about the O'Loughlin brothers. Um, Gavin O'Mahony, Paddy O'Brien, who was absolutely outstanding uh, again against Barry Brown, and of course Graham Mulcahy, Kevin O'Donnell. These 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 players like that's a huge reservoir of experience going all the way back over a decade. So. They're still on board, and and um, like he he. he Presents Kilmallock is a very, very formidable side. Like, and Michal Houlihan has taken over the free taking duties, and not only free taking duties, but he, you know, he, he, he's, 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 he's quite prolific as well from open play. I, th- I think against Barry Brown was at four or five points he got from open play. So he, he certainly did. I think definitely four. I think so. You know, he 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 he's he's one to watch. Oh, you know, Riley, I thought um, against Bally Brown, there were signs of uh, finding his finding his best form again, which which would be another huge plus. Um, you've Kieran O'Connor then, who is adapting to centre back road and and seems to be bedding down there. So, um, like it's it's it, 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 it it's a formidable Kilmallock team, and but it, it, it's it's all contingent, Jack, and they're clicking on the day. On what happens on the day now, go to the other side, and we, we've spoken about the influence of Anthony Nash already, um, and there's there's no doubt at all about it. It's 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 huge. Now that there, there was nothing he could have done um, for either of the two goals that Owen Sheehan scored for Gareth Spillane in the last game, um, like they, they were just crackers. They weren't they weren't a goalkeeper in the world would, would have saved them, and like they they would be looking to people like Barry Nash. And um, the Ryan brothers, um, um, Thomas and 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 Brian, 
um, ex excellent hurlers now. They, 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 they also have Conor McSweeney, a vastly experienced player. Brian Nash has experience at county level. And then the up front, you, you know, Davy O'Neill is playing absolutely fantastic hurling, got five points against Gareth Spillane. But they have two newcomers up there. There's Ken Burns from All Christians, who is who is hitting the freeze. And you Barry Cooney, a former Tipperary minor, who has come in this year and come on board. He hit five, He has hit nine points in the championship so far. So all from play. So like the, 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 and you you have the experience Michael Keane, like and um, that's a case to be made for South Liberties, Jack. There's yeah, a certainly. case, and I I I I don't think now it's their second year contesting the quarterfinals. Last year they 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 lost to Doon. They were competitive for quite a bit of the game. I, I, I think um, I, I, I think Liberty will be will will be quite competitive in this game, um, and it's it's not it's it's it's, it's um, it looks like Kilmalik, but it's not a foregone conclusion. Yeah, it certainly isn't a foregone conclusion. Kilmalik are definitely favourites, but results aside, Matt, um, and I we won't dwell on this, but you kind of want to see a competitive game first and foremost because they've been few and far between, like as you rightly pointed out there. Um, so Liberty's pushed Dune all the way. Well, not all the way, but for a lot of the way. Bally Brown, the same in the Pearson for a long time, but the, the top teams have kind of pulled away. So if we get competitive games, it would definitely be a step in the right direction. Um, The second semi-final of the day, Adair versus Patrick's well. Like, it promises to be um a close, a close affair. Last year, they met in the first game after the lockdown, if I'm correct, in the Gaelic Crowns. Yeah. And Adair led for, I would say, 45 to 50 minutes that day before Aaron Galan mm -hmm. turned it on. I think even in the last 12 months, Adair have improved. Um, Paswell could have improved as well, but mm. it should be a close game at 4 o'clock. Should be, should be a close game. And, and just talking about close games there, uh, uh, as as you said, um, going into a semi-final seven days later, that, that there is nothing better than a close game and a hard game and a game that, that's right in the melting pot almost until the finish. I know it's not good for spectators or you know, um, but um, you know, from from in 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 the overall scheme of things, if in in, in hurling wise, uh, it's much better to get a hard, good, serious, honest test. Um, right up to the final whistle, if if, if at all possible, um, because it, it stands in it stands aside in good stead going forward. Yeah, look, it's it it it, it it's mouth watering when these two two meet, and you know you know something, um, it, it's a cliche to say that when neighbours like this meet, um, a da local derby like this, that form goes out the window. But this is one where it really does from time to time, and um, uh, Adair. I, I thought it there last year um, were very, very competitive in the group stage. As you rightly pointed out there, they played Patrick's well in the first round. I'd say led him for 45 to 50 minutes, as you said, um, and then succumbed to a late flurry uh, led by, by Anne Galan. And, um, and they, they drew with Dune in the second round. Now, um, it, it was a bit of a shock to the Adair system that, that, you know, that they lost the relegation final to a hand. Um, I, I, I think it was it, it was an unexpected result, um, but you know, in many ways, um, it, it gave them an opportunity to regroup um, through the um, th through section B, and that's no disrespect to the teams in section B because, um, like right from the start in section B, Adair were probably the team to beat in it. Um, yeah. Now they, they 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 have won their game, and not only won their game. They won that game with Monolene very, very comfortably. But Jack, they got a serious, decent test from Kildaimo Palace Kenry. Yeah. Which would be of huge benefit to them, in my view, going into into um into the game on Sunday. But look, you you, you look at the well and you look um like Kilmalak, um it, that that squad is peppered with players that have you know won won a couple of county championships. Uh, co county championship medals they know what it's all about and of course we have the big three um, uh, you know Dermot Burns uh, who was absolutely outstanding in both games so far and and um, um, with, with Keen Lynch of course do we need to say any more there and and we have, we've had Galan 
you know, so th their team is built around that. But but you know, they've so many experienced players. Um, you 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 have the O'Briens, and uh, you know M Mark Carmody, Jack Keller, uh, Brian Murray, all star in two thousand and seven. Still the same appetite for the game as he had all those years ago. You know, and you, you, the young players coming through the party, Mahers, Josh Considine, you know, bidding to get back onto the county squad. You you, 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 have, you have the Kirby's, like J Jason Galan. Like, the, the names just roll off, Jack. Mm. You know, it, it's very, very formidable. And, like, they, they lost the first round. And uh, I had people saying, oh, the will are gone. But they lost the first round because they played the entire game with 14 players. No, that mightn't be the entire reason that 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 they lost it, but like in dramatic circumstances, um, we we, we they had a player sent off before the ball was thrown in, for an incident off the ball. Yeah. So, like when you factor all these things in, like and they 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 came so close even with with, with fourteen players, I I think it's a very very formidable Patrick's well side, and and um, uh, I I I think they gave us a little. They gave us a little cameo um, in the game against the hand of the level and the heights that they are capable of reaching. Yeah. Now, cases can be made from a dare, for a dare. You know, any any team that has Declan Hannon on board has to be respected. His leadership qualities, his hurling qualities, what he brings to the table. And um, you, 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 have, you have Willie Griffin. Like what can be said about Willie Griffin? Probably the most prolific scorer in Limerick club hurling for how many years now? Like mm. he scores for fun. Yeah, you know? he does in Ferguson. Um, like you've John Fitzgibbon. Look at the experience of John Fitzgibbon. You've Brendan O'Connor, a huge presence in in you know inside uh, in in front of a of of of, of a defence. And then you have a number of players, the, the Michael Keynes of of this world that 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 are coming through. Um, a lot of young players there as well, and bedding in. And you have uh, experienced players, James Gahan and the like. You know that that have been around the block. Jody Hannon, that you know Brian Corton is quite experienced now. That know what is what is all about. So, like it, it, it it's like it, it's all set up for a fantastic game, Jack. It's all yeah. set up for a fantastic game. Whether Adair can break that hoodoo and become the first team from Section B to take a scalp in the quarterfinals, that's another question. Yeah, and it's a question I'll be putting you in a while uh, when we get to the predictions. But um, we have the County Cup, and we'll talk about the County Cup later on in predictions because like, every team will want to win a trophy, but it's a, it's a one-off game for teams that aren't in relegation or the knockout stages. But on relegation... You touched on a hand versus Pally Brown already, and then obviously at the other side you have or lower on in section B, you have Backrock versus Monoline. Um a hand Bally Brown, a hand were there twelve months ago, Bally Brown were promoted, um evenly matched teams. Which way do you see that one going? Uh, who'll preserve their senior A status? When I was asked that question this time last year, I said that a hand would go down. They proved me spectacularly wrong. Because they beat it there. Um, I, 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 I think. Um, I, I, I think. Bally Brown are capable of regrouping. From the defeat that they suffered to, um, to um, the oh. piercing, and I think it's very, very important for them because they're they 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 they're, they're a team to a certain degree that are in transition with. You know that there's, 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 there's four minors on on, on on the team or four under nineteens on the team, and it's very very important that they continue to be exposed to hurling at the highest level, and that is in Section A in Limerick, which is of a very very high standard, and they, you know that nobody can argue about that, and and um, I I think they will regroup. and that they that that they will just about preserve their status now, like. You know, it's very hard to predict against a team that has a Tom Morrissey on board. <laughs> and a Dan Morrissey. And a Dan Morrissey. But, like, Tom... Tom <laughs> like, Tom has taken a hand to places like that, you know. Um, so, um, if you ask me to make a prediction, and I, is this part of the predictions? 
No, I'll leave the relegation finals out of predictions now. You can yeah, say yeah. what things no, are going to win. I'm, 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 I'm taking, uh, tipping Belly Brown that Belly Brown may just get over the line in that one and, and preserve status. And I think this is very, very important for him. In, 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 in terms of the stage of development that they're at, hmm. And it, the fact that they have so many young players, um, you know, were they to go down, what would it do to their confidence? Like it, it was the one worry that, and and, and I made the point during the commentary on the um, game, uh, their, their game against uh, Patrick's or against Napierci, how would they react? Not just to the manner, not just to the defeat by Kilmallock, but Jack to the manner in Kilmallock. Their manner, um, how their young minds absorbed the manner in which they lost that game. Because, like, on that particular night, um, Barry Brown left everything on the field. They left everything in the Gaelic grounds, and 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 still, you know, and um, but if if they can move on from that, I I, I honestly think that that Barry Brown are capable of upsetting a hand. Yeah, I think Barry Brown are probably the better team, but as you said, a hand have the Morrissey brothers, but. Mm. I just slightly side with Pelle Brown. Um, look, for whichever team goes down, they'll have a chance to regroup next year. They won't be relegated to Premier Intermediate, which will be the case for either Blackrock or Mona Lean. Uh, Blackrock won in 2019, the Premier Intermediate Championship. I think Mona Lean won in 2016. Um, neither have really pushed up trees since they got into the, the senior ranks. Um, Mona Lean definitely were very below par this year. Blackrock actually got a win against uh, Gary Flan when they needed to, but and obviously Gary Slan win. I presume BlackRock thought they probably were safe. Um, BlackRock will be favourites as a result of that, but in a one-off game again, Matt, like, it could yeah, go either yeah, way. You're right, Jack. You're, you're, you're right. Um, it, it's going to be a one-off game, and um, obviously there are two Black Rocks out there. There, there are the ones that, that, that face Liberties in the first round, and then there, there were the ones that beat Gary Spillane, so... Um, it's it, it's a question: Would the real Black Rock stand up? And let's see what the which which is which. But um, I, I I was impressed with them the day that they, the way they went about Gareth Bellan because a subplot to that game with Gareth Bellan Jack is that that Black Rock had a very very poor record in recent years against Gareth Bellan. The sight of the Gareth Bellan jersey was nearly enough, you know. But they got a draw with him last year. And and um, they they they, they went one better this year, and I I was impressed with the manner in which they in which they went about it. Now I haven't seen Mona Lean this year, but just just judging by the score lines, um, uh, they, 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 there is little comfort to be got from them from those score lines. Now they 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 they, they were comprehensively beaten by a dare, um, like Kildimo Palace Kenry were comprehensively beating him until the closing stages when perhaps maybe they, they stepped off the stepped off the gas a small bit and 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 Mona Lean came back into it. Um I I, I think it would be worrying times for Mona Lean. Um I am I'm it, it has nothing to do with the fact that I'm right beside Black Rock here. But I, I think the Rockies are quite capable of preserving their status because um but it depends what Black Rock turns up. Now yeah. I, I'd be quite confident if the Black Rock that played Gareth Plan turns up to play Mona Lean, they'll beat him. If the Black Rock that played South Liberties turn up, I'm not so sure. Yeah, okay. yeah just in these one-off games, you really can't tell. Briefly touching on the, the Premier Intermediate Championship, because we'll talk about it more in the predictions. Mungard versus Glen Rua repeated last year's semi-final and Newcastle West versus Capamore. Um, Newcastle West in their first year at the grade it's only Glenroo's second which is kind of hard to tell Munger were in the final last year and Capamore were senior side until two or three years ago so like there's real quality in that Premier Intermediate uh, hurling semi-finals there are there are and you're right um, Munger and Glenroo is a repeat of last year semi-final um, which was nip and tuck I think you were there yourself Jack Mm. Right up until the concluding stages, when 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 Mungret drew clear, um, I haven't seen Mungret this year. Obviously, I I have seen Glenroe, and um, uh, I have mixed feelings about him. Um, I I thought um, I, I could sum up their game against um, Drummond at Lacka, which was the last game that they played, and and say that. In the first half, they wouldn't beat anyone. 
and uh, in, in in the second half they'd give a, a run to the best of the senior teams. Yeah. So I'm asking, where is the real Black Rock? I'm saying, where is the real Glenru? You know, yeah, and um, was... I, I, I think this game, it, it, it has been from the start and it's been universally agreed and like they have they have done nothing to dispel the, 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 the narrative that they are hot favourites to win the championship. Uh, in, in, in the competition themselves, Mungret St. Paul's in which the way that they went about um, winning winning their three games and did so without Paul O'Brien, um, who I mm. understand is closing in on a return for, for, for the weekend. And um, uh, like it, it, it makes some favourites. But Wendland rule to bring to Kilmallet next Saturday the form that they showed in the second half against Drummond at Lacker. It there will make it fine and difficult for for Mungret St. Paul's. Yeah, and that, I'll ask you to nail your your colours to the mast later on. That that with, that with, is the, that that is the big if though, you know. And yeah. I'm just giving you my honest background. Now it isn't easy. I'm right here in the middle of the row as we speak. Yeah, well, you know, fellow my a couple, back your own, even if they lose. There's a couple of players even across the road who can hear me through the window nearly at this stage, but. <laughs> You, know? you might get a stone in through the window if you're not careful, but yeah, I won't exactly. ask you to, to, to nail it down yet until the end of the podcast. Um, the intermediate quarterfinals also down. Sorry, no, I didn't. Uh, I'm uh, Capamora and Newcastle West. Um, um, I uh, obviously saw Newcastle West. I saw him against Lanro. I, 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 I thought that they, they, that they were, um, uh, they had adapted quite well to inter intermediate premier intermediate hurling. Now, a little, a small little fly in the ointment for Newcastle West was the way that they were turned over by, um, by um, uh, Brough in the final round, and um, you, you, you just wonder was it Brough really finding their form at last that had deserted them in the early stages, or was it Newcastle West gone off the boil, or um, were Newcastle West trying to juggle hurling and football? Because with with the, with the big quarterfinal coming up against um, against Clahan, because there, there there is there is a fair crossover of players. There's probably five or six players that are that that, that are playing both. And it, as you know, it, it's not easy. But it it, it it tells me that there's a certain vulnerability. That there might be still a bit of certain vulnerability about Newcastle West, even though I was impressed with the way. That they beat Lenru, not because they beat Lenru, but the way in which they did it. I, I I was impressed with the way they played their game, the way they they, they set out, and uh, particularly in 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 the closing stages, they won it by a point. Um, in in the closing stages, um, when when they when Lenru threw everything at them, they 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 they, they found the answers. But I I have a hunch. Uh, about Capamore. Capamore are a very seasoned team, Jack. There, 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 there's, 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 there's a residual of seeing our experience among those Capamore ranks that um, you know that has been there because they're, they're, they're on is this that third year down? I think it is, is it 2018 they came down. So like um you know there, 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 there are players that have been around the block now they have a couple of young players as well from we'll say players that were involved in you know, minor and under twenty-one winning county sides, maybe at B or at, at A level. But you know, if you win a county and you get a couple of players, the idea, of course, is that you get the one or two players every year, and, and they've obviously done that. I, I'm, 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 I'm impressed. If if I were facing a cap of more, I'd be worried about it, Jack. <laughs> yeah, I, I think anyone facing the semi-final would be thinking a lot about it. And you mentioned Bruff there a minute ago. Bruff versus Maru, obviously, is the relegation final um, this Saturday um, in Karakhan Lish. Like, Maru were senior last year. Like, there would be a big fall from Grace. Um, and as we said, Bruff got actually got a win in their last game against Lucaster in the semi finals. Like, you'd have to favour Bruff. It's a, it's a perilous situation for both teams. I'm shaking my head in, in, in disbelief, Jack. That's. These two teams are in the position that they're in. I, you'd have got long odds on that at the beginning of the year, Jack. Irrespective you of, would have. In, but it's, it's very, very irrespective. irrespective of the configuration of the groups, um, there, there'd be very, very few people, if they're honest, would have said like that. Prof and Marubo would be fighting to stay alive. 
you know, but that's what it is what it is. And uh, and the tables don't lie. Um, they have one win between them and a draw between them in six matches. So they are where they deserve to be. Like um, Brough lost their first two matches to, to Drummond and uh, to Dunru and to Drummond at Lacquer and were effectively out of it before they played Newcastle West. Like the, the Newcastle World West. Of- the Newcastle West game was an absolute, it was your quintessential classical dead rubber, Jack. Because you had Newcastle West, who couldn't be dislodged off top spot going into it. And then you had Brough, who couldn't be dislodged out of bottom spot going into it. So irrespective of the result, neither side was going to move. So um, that may have fed into into it as well. But it was a comprehensive win, though, far, far, far... Um, Far broth and, and just happening back a small bit again to Newcastle West, like I would have thought the ideal situation for a team coming up like Newcastle West with the momentum that they had from winning the intermediate last year and they, from the start that they had got with the Premier Intermediate, that the real trick was to keep the momentum going. But obviously, it, 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 it didn't happen. And if anything, um, you know, it now hands the, the momentum to, to broth going into this relegation playoff. But like to, to think that you know, in two years, that 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 um, that Maru Bohor could suffer um, uh, successive relegations. Like it, it 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 was sort of unthinkable. But like, if if you take a couple of figures out of the equation, Jack. Like if you take you know the last of Seamus Hickey who moved to Croke Kilfinney, and 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 Shawnee Tobin, and 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 um, who had to retire because of injury. Like and. Like, mention Maru Bohr. Those names hit you straight in the face for all the right reasons and the influence that they brought. Like, they have left huge holes in, in, in the Maru Bohr dressing room. And, uh, and um, I, look, the, the, the slide seems to have continued in, 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 in the group stages of the championship because they suffered a heavy defeat against um, Mungret St. Paul's in the opening round. Like, they earned themselves a lifeline, Jack, in, 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 in the second game when they drew with Nakeni. And like they went they went into the third round with a realistic chance that if they won the hurling match, they were in the in, in the semi-final. Yeah. But it didn't happen. So yeah. you know, the, the trajectory has been down. And um Brough probably have broken um They've probably broken the losing sequence now. <coughs> and it was a huge morale boosting win for Brough. I think Brough will survive because, like, um, they have been one of the stalwarts of, 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 of the Premier Hurling. They were, they were the first winners in 2014. They were runners up in 2018, semi finalists in 2019, semi finalists in 2020. There was three years in which they were banished to the greener fields of senior hurling. Um, but whenever they have been around the Premier Championship, they they, they have been very influential players. So um, I, I I'm I'm going for Brough to to to, to survive and uh, but like why they're in this position, Jack? When I look down through that team sheet, I I don't get it. I'm afraid. Yeah, I go with Brough as well. But if look, it's hard to tell how anyone gets into a relegation battle a lot of the time. But mm-hmm. they're there, and they just have to do with it. But and and a bad performance from either team, and they're in the intermediate ranks. Touch on the intermediate ranks. We have our four quarterfinals this weekend. We've Palace Green versus Brewery, Croom versus Granabell and Gary, Crocodile Finney versus Napiershig, and Effen versus Nakaderi. I'll get you to touch on them when we get to predictions round. We also have round five of the Junior A Hurling Championship. Um. Skeeton versus Dune on Saturday, St. Kieran's Mona Gay on the same day, St. Pat's Guys Plan on Sunday, All Christians, Temple Glanton on Saturday, Castan Ballet Grand versus Bally Brown on Sunday, Clahan versus Staker Wallace, Monoline versus Mungret, Patchwell versus Fina Kilmeady, Kiltili Drum Keen versus Ahan, Bally Brick and Boromore versus Krahora, Drum Cutter Brother versus Caroline, and Raquel versus Kalidi. We would have touched on the junior championship after the last set of results. It's round five or it's round four. Sorry, that should say round, round four. Round four, Jack. Yeah, we'll we won't touch on it really because it's still there's still a lot of room for moving with six teams in a group. But there, those are the games we'll be able to touch on it next week a bit more because there'll probably be a couple of teams that are guaranteed to go through if not the whole group settled. But we'll move on to Camogie. But I'm hearing, Jack. I'm I'm hearing that there's an excellent competition. 
but I've only been to um, Skeeton's games, and there's a real high standard um, Munger last day, or mm. a very high standard. Now, I know a couple of players have got burned in the meantime, which will show the standard they're at to be playing with a team that are going in for senior ranks. Finkel Media were strong as well. Um, Skeeton have played well in the three games um, as well. So, And the likes of Castan Ballet Grand are always a good hurling no, team. Munger M- 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 St. Paul's are uh, shocking everybody. Yeah, was with um, the Paddy, and... Paddy Brick and Bohemore Moore, Ken. Yeah, you know, and that, that, that's a very, very interesting game there. Um, in in it's on in is it in Caharelia on Sunday evening at four o'clock? Um, no, Saturday evening at four o'clock. Clahan mm. and the Stakers. Yeah, that is a winner take all game at the bottom of the table. And Clahan played in the semi final last year. Yeah, it like most competitions, there's there's not much between the sides really. When you see Croke are gone straight into the quarterfinals, like and they beat Patchwell and Patchwell have kind of struggled this year. Like it just goes to show that any team on their day is like if, if if you if you take the final three that remained last year, um, uh, that you would expect to drive on this year, uh, Croke and Finney are the fourth one. They're they're out of the equation. But yeah. Patrick Swell, Clahan, and from Bradford, they're finding it tough this year. I suppose Patrick Swell are going the best of them. Like yeah. the, the Drum, Drum Bradford's chances of, of progressing are like Eskeaton's, you know, contingent on the results of others. Like it, it's not within their own control, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, look, it's, it's a very difficult and Like the, the real tough games, um, you know, and They've, they've been a good standard as well at the same time. I've seen a couple of them, as I yeah, said. Yeah, well, I, I've been hearing that now. Obviously, when, when they're on at the same time as the Premier Intermediate and, and the Senior Championship, we don't get an opportunity to go and see them. But 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 uh, anybody that has gone and see them, um, like, it, it's nearly unanimous that that that, um, that they're a very, very good standard and, and uh, in, highly entertaining games and, and hugely, hugely competitive and hard-fought. Which, yeah. which tells me that, of course, um, first of all, that the, the competition is a success, and secondly, it tells us that that, that the structure is a success. Um, Twenty-four teams, teams of six, groups of six. I think it's a fair chance to everybody. Now, it's 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 a huge logistical job to get it played off, and certainly the first, the first three rounds have run like clockwork, and I have no doubt that the, the next two rounds will run the same. But but um, it's 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 an absolutely fantastic competition. Yeah, and just hope we get Carlton. to see some games at the end of it, Jack. Yeah, the Limerick Hurling is on the crest of a wave, and it, it's it's telling when you go to these games. The junior is of such a high standard. But I suppose we'll move on from the hurling for a while, and we'll we'll go in into the Camogie, and it returns this weekend for the the second round of games. I'll just get the games up here for us, Matt, in the senior championship. I suppose we have a hand versus Brough and Krakora versus Newcastle West in in Group One. Newcastle West were big winners over um, a hand in the first round, while Brough and Krakora played out a draw. Like a hand will be will be desperate to to regroup after that loss to Newcastle, but Brough are building and as intermediate champions, they won't hold any fear uh, um, uh, against the hand. They won't. They won't. And. Um... It, it's it's you know because of the manner in which um, uh, a hand lost in the first round, um, you could Brough would probably be looking at this uh, um, as as an opportunity maybe to get that first win at 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 this level under their belts. Um, now, in in the county final last year, I I was was hugely impressed. I have to say with 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 with, with Brough. And uh, at that stage, um, I was also impressed with Kappa Moore by the by the same token, who were the losers in in, in the final. But I, I I I thought we had a very very good intermediate Komogi final last year, and um, uh, I, it was just a bit of a downer on that day. At that stage, that there, there were there was no facility for Bruff to play a senior Komogi um, this year, but they, they, they subsequently made that case. It, that was because of the pandemic. 
and what have you. But they subsequently made their case, and they were it was acceded to. And and um, I felt at that stage that they were that that they were a team that that um, that wanted an opportunity at senior level. So did this now they, they drew um, with Krakora. Obviously, it was an arm wrestle the first uh, in in the opening round because it ended up six points apiece. Low scoring, you don't get it much low scoring, more low scoring than that. But um, I, I think this will be an opportunity possibly for them to get their their um, their first win. That, that there's no doubt that a hand have to be somewhat low in confidence. That, again, not by the defeat by Newcastle West, because Newcastle West, are, let's face it, Jack, are, will be one of the front runners for the championship. They, they, were, they were narrowly beaten in the county final last year. Rebecca De Lee is back on board. Um, and you know, and um, uh, Carlo Leary went off in, in in the county final last year as well. So um, they are they're they're going to be very formidable. But it, 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 they'll probably be low on confidence because it was such a comprehensive um, defeat like that. I, I think Newcastle West really made an opening their statement um, uh, this year that 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 that, that, they're, that they have plans to go one better. So. Um, it 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 um it's an opportunity for Bluff. Um it's an opportunity for Bluff to make a statement. And then just touched on that, do you expect Newcastle to make it two from two against Rikora? I do. I do. And um it 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 it, it, it will give us a sense of um it'll probably give us a sense of where Newcastle West are in the group um in relation to the rest of the teams, I would imagine. Yeah, because you you sort of have to believe that that um, Brough and and Krakor are around the same level, and we've, we 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 you know we we've got to exactly find um, where a hand's level are is. But uh, uh, of course, you see, Jack, it's not very long ago since a hand were county champions. Yeah. It was twenty eighteen they were county champions. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I, I, as far as I'm concerned, with a hand, the jury is still out. Um, on 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 that performance, like um, we we spoke about it with the ladies' football and a one-sided result or two there, uh, as to where the teams are at. But um, um, yeah, I uh, I honestly think it, it it'll give us an idea to benchmark um, uh, Krakora as to where they are in 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 relation to the top teams, because like they don't come much bigger than Newcastle West. I suppose every every game will give us a benchmarker because it's still very early doors and it just shows yeah. that when we look at Group 2, it'll be Napierschik's first outing. They play Khalid, who beat Grena by a pint in the first round. Grena have a bye, obviously, um, after that loss. But like very early doors, Matt. But Khalid will be looking probably not just to make it two from two, but probably a more comprehensive performance than the one-point victory over Grena. Yeah, they, 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 they certainly will because like if if if... if... Like if you look at the team sheets, you know, and um, I I don't think you can gauge anything, you know. And is there any more scientific way of gauging um, where teams are at? But when when you see the names that 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 fall out of the um, out of the Kiridi team sheet, um, um, you, you you know you 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 would be expecting you would be expecting that they would see off Napierschik, um, but uh, you know you could read too much into um. Uh, they're being pressed so hard by by Granny Ball and Gary. Like uh, Granny Ball and Gary are one of the giants of Limerick Camogie, Jack. Mm-hmm. You know they they have a tradition that like, not just winning Limerick Camogie championships, but winning Munster and All Ireland championships. This this you you you're dealing with 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 that type of tradition in 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 in, in Granny Ball and Gary. So. Um, I I I would I, I don't buy into it that that, that um you know that that, that um um Kilidi have to improve an awful lot just because they only beat Granada and Gary by a point. Yeah, true. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't see it that way. I, I have far more respect for what um for what um uh Granada have 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 achieved over the years and like in in that game against um against um against um Kilidi, like you two players, like Sarah Carey and Fiona Hickey, we all we all know what they can do. Those two players were back in the fold with Granada and Gary. Now Fiona, they're both All Ireland winners in 2014. Fiona was the All Ireland winning captain. Yeah. 
you know, all right, she played in goals. But just imagine having that level of experience behind your defence and Sarah Carey inside in the middle of it. That's a, that's a huge boost to any club. So yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm reading very little into it other than that um, possibly, and I might be totally wrong, that, um, you know, you write off Granibel and Gary at your paddle. Yeah, well, you, you don't write off any team at, at this at this early stage. Mm. Looking through the other um, championships, in the intermediate championship, Blue Boar versus Kalidi. They were both winners in the first round. Newcastle West versus Valley Graham will obviously be looking to get their first win in the campaign. And then Group 2, Crow Kilfinney versus Capamore and Temple Lantern versus Monlean. Capamore last year's losing finalists. They beat Monlean the first round. Um, Crow Kilfinney lost to Temple Lantern. So a couple of sides looking for a first win, a couple of sides looking for a second win. Um, another interesting round of, of fixtures, Intermediate Championship. We'll just uh, run through the Junior A Championship then as well. You have Galbally are off this week. Uh, Black Rock F Black Rock Effen play Munger at St. Paul's. Passwell are off this weekend after losing to Dare last weekend. The Dare are against Bally Brown. And then in the Junior B Championship, you have Granite Ballingarry versus Dune, the Pierschick versus Nakaderi, uh, Torna Fuller versus Brough, and Moraline versus St. Aylbys in group two. Just in general, Matt, any any standout fixtures there? As we said, it's it's only the second round fixtures, very early doors. Yeah, I, th I think there's a crucial game there in 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 in, in um, Group Two of the Intermediate Championship, the the, the clash of of Capamore and Croke Kilfinney. Um, I think they met in the semi final last year. Capamore won it, but um, um, like that, that's a crucial game for Croke Kilfinney, having lost to Tim Danton in the first round. So that 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 that, that that's one to look out for. Yeah, and as we said, look, it's it's only the second round. You'll it's, you'll definitely get a, a better gauge on the teams after this weekend's fixtures. They're all played at half eleven on Sunday, which look, in a way it's it's a pity that you won't you're going to be able to see one game max. But that's just the way we are in in these COVID times, right? Isn't it? It is. It is. And we just got to live with it. Yeah, there's nothing really we can we can do about that. Um, I suppose before we move on to the, the predictions round or the prediction section of the podcast, it'd be remiss of us to to move on without mentioning the king of the Cooley Mountains, Colin Ryan, um, Limerick's fifth ever Puck Fada champion. Um, I don't have the details how many shots he won by, but I, I heard he won by one shot up there. Finished four in 2019, obviously didn't get a chance last year, but a brilliant achievement from the Palace Green man and, and a nice little medal to go. Or a nice trophy to go his All-Ireland medal. Yeah, um, I'm absolutely delighted for Colin. Um, um, he's one guy that I'm a huge fan of, um, as people probably know. But um, I'm ab absolutely thrilled for him. It, it'll go. It'll sit nicely with his 2018 All-Ireland medal, and he he has a couple of um, he has a couple of um, All-Ireland. At Munster and All Ireland under twenty one medals, and he has a couple of Munster minor medals. So he he's building up a nice nice little collection now. But you're right, um, it 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 um he he won by one stroke. He had twenty one hit twenty one shots, and the chasing pack and the nearest him had 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 twenty two. But um, uh, it, it was a fantastic win because he came fourth, as you're right, um, um for um in twenty nineteen. It's just just from a historical point of view, he is he's the fifth he's the fifth um, uh, Limerick winner ever. Um, he, he, you he's he's following in the footsteps of um, and it's it's it 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 was the 60th anniversary of the the start of the Pok Fada. It was inaugurated in 1961, and it was won by a Limerick man Vincent Godfrey. In 1961, and then um, you had um, uh, Pat Hartigan was the next winner in 71 and 73. Tommy Quaid was a winner in 91, and I think um, it was a 2001 and 2005 that Albert Shanahan won it. it was. And with Collie Ryan in 2021, so the one seems to be a good year for Limerick when it comes to um, the Pop Father with 61, 71, 91, and uh, 2001, 2021. 20, so, you know, um, well, well. <laughs> but um, uh, it, it was a fantastic performance by him. 
Um, now this year that the, 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 there was there were no um, uh, county um, puck fathers. It 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 was by invitation only uh, because of the COVID, and um, uh, you'd have to say that the that 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 the organisers would have invited the cream of the crop. So, like, um, it's it's a fantastic performance, a fantastic achievement for him, fantastic achievement for Palace Green and Limerick. But above all, it's 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 a fabulous achievement for himself, and I'm absolutely delighted. Couldn't happen to a better guy. Yeah. We're all delighted. And, just, and just, ju just on that, now Martina McMahon also competed in the Camogie and finished a very, very creditable fifth yeah. in the Camogie. I think she was three points behind or three shots behind. Um, the, the, the Camogie was won by Corks, uh, seeing a reserve goalkeeper at the moment, um, Molly Lynch from, from, from Sarsfields. She, she's the reserve goalkeeper to Emmy Lee on the Cork Singer Camogie team at the moment. But um, Molly Lynch won, won, the, won, won the Camogie, but Martina McMahon was a very, very creditable fifth. But w w we seem to forget, you know, just talking about Martina McMahon, like w w when we think about Ma Martina McMahon, we, 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 we think about her as being the, the, the great, the queen of, of 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 handball, which no doubt she is world champion, Irish champion. I think she's lost track of how many Irish championships she, she has won. Um, she has been so dominant. Um, certainly the queen of the alleys, no doubt at all about that. But like when I first became acquainted with 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 um, with with, with um, Martina, she was more than an accomplished camogie player. Like and and the, the the what what has been handball's gain with with Martina McMahon has certainly been the Mrix Camogie loss because she had huge potential as a Camogie player. So like there was there was there, there it was no surprise to see her going going to the Cooley Mountains and doing well. Yeah, just uh, Martina McMahon. I first became acquainted her when I was I was I'd say I was eight or nine. I presume she was the same age, and we played Croke in an under eights tournament. It was Crown Hurling and. I, like when girls and boys are allowed to play obviously together and she was the main player for Croke and I I could be wrong now but I'm thinking she scored 17 goals against us in one match and we had, it, it was an indoors game and we had a rubber boss in the hurley and it's, it's, it's shameful to say but I tried my best to let her let her the, the hurley off her shins but to no avail she still well, scored you're, 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 you're not serious Jack that you were going out fouling were you? I was fouling whoever whoever was in front of me was, was no avail um Still got hockey, but Martina Van, as you said, is, is a class act. I presume mm. she's one of these people that can turn her hand to anything and look. Yeah, actually, uh, as far as I recollect, and I'm I'm, I'm subject to correction in this. I, I I think she lined out with Croc Kilfinney in the Limerick Camogie Championship last year. I I couldn't tell you, but it would definitely be a, a gain to the Croc Kilfinney. But look, many congratulations to to Colin. Hopefully, we'll get him on someday to chat about it because it's. It's a really unique championship that in the GA it's probably okay. the only kind of individual thing you can do in hurling. Um, yeah, but I, I don't I don't know why we're 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 we're, 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 we're surprised that um, like you know he had a fabulous goal you know he started off life as Limerick minor goalkeeper. Yeah. And he had, he had a fabulous puck out and and like we see him at uh, with with uh, with the county team how long he could strike it. And Jack, will you ever forget? When he stepped up to the 65 in the Gaelic grounds in the National League quarter final, cool as a cucumber and put it over the bar, like you know, um, like you know, Colin has a lot of strings to his bow, and uh, I'm absolutely delighted for him that 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 this has come to pass for him. Yeah, I go to limb and say he's the only man with a, a puck for the title, All Ireland winners medal, and the winning pint in a in a free taking competition in a National League quarter final. Yeah. <laughs> We'll get Colin on someday and we can we can go through his list of achievements. Um, before we end, Matt, we'll go on to our predictions section. Um, last week, uh, you were on fire, Matt, with the football. You got seven out of eight right. The only the only one letting you down was Kildano Palace Henry overcoming Mungert St. Paul's. You can rectify it now this week and you can go for, for Kildano Palace Henry. But we'll start with the with the... With the senior, we'll do the senior quarterfinals and the county cup. We'll leave the relegation out for it because this is only for a bit of fun and you don't like relegation is never fun for anyone. We'll do the Premier Intermediate semi finals and we'll do the four quarterfinals in the Intermediate Championship. 
So we'll start with Kilmallock versus South Liberties on Sunday. You touched on the game, Matt. We you seem to be edging towards Kilmallock. Kilmallock by four. Kilmallock by four. I have Kilmallock by five. Um, but I again, you wouldn't be surprised if Liberties got close or even drawn or winning the game. The f- or two hours later, or in the, about a half an hour, I suppose, after the conclusion of the game, Pat as well versus Dare. It's Patrick Swell, Patrick Swell by two. Patrick Swell by two. I'm going to go by the well by one. Um, I saw a Dare against Kildare Palace Kennery. They were impressive, especially when we got the lead. Um, there's some quality players. I think they have good matchups. It just is who Max Keen Lynch is the, is the big problem. Um, but we'll see. We'll not, see what they do. Not in the me anymore, Jack. Yeah, it won't be me either. Um, Kildare Palace Kennery versus Gary Splann in this once off County Cup final. I myself are going to go for. Kildare Palace by three after seeing him twice this year. I was very impressed. Um, yeah, I'm going for Kildare Palace Kenry by four. KP by four. So we're we're the same in all those games. Uh, Kilmallock, Patchwell, um, Kild- or Kildare Palace Kenry in the Premier Intermediate. Uh, Munger St. Paul's versus your own Glenroe. Mo- Munger St. Paul's by Munger St. Paul's by three. Munger St. Paul's by three. He's gone against his heart again. Uh, I have Munger down by by four. I think it'll. I think it could be closer than that, but I think Munger there that probably just that step ahead, especially. But Jack, I, I I qualify by saying that I hope to God I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, this again. This is a win win for you. We went against uh, Badlanders. Uh, or you went against Linru a couple of times in the Burnham in the past. So hopefully again. I have got. I got. I, 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 I. I'm on a bit of a run now, but um, um, you know, I got Lemru right the last day, and I got Ballylanders right last week. So, but you know, um, I hope you're wrong this week. I hope I'm wrong. Third time. Um, I hope third time I'll be wrong. And then the intriguing clash of Capamore and Newcastle West. I'm going for Capamore by two. Capamore by two. Uh, I'm going to go against you this one, Matt. I'm going to go for Newcastle by two. Um. Just think they're building. I think um, teams that come up a lot of times bring them into them, like Glen Rue last year, got to the semi finals. I think Newcastle can go one step further. By my calculations, it'll be a Mungret versus Newcastle final. You're calling for a Mungret versus Capamore final. Well, I suppose you're calling for a Glen Rue Capamore final. Oh, well, God, I'm yeah. calling for Glen Rue all day. And I, I don't care. I don't care whether it's Newcastle West or whether it is um, Capamore, although I slightly prefer Newcastle West because Glen Rue um, have, have beaten Newcastle West in the junior final in 2000 and in the intermediate final in 2019. So we have a good record against them in the final. Yeah, we'll see. Your head, your heart, your head and your heart are in opposition corners. Well, uh, my head and my heart are at loggerheads, Jack. Yeah, moving into the quarterfinals of the intermediate championship, and like just looking at it, they're so hard to call. With Sour Palace Green versus Brewery, like, I'm, I'm going for Palace here. Um, the right. uh, teams in, in you know, in, in a different stage of transition and a different stage of, of, of redevelopment, uh, uh, you know, and I, I, I think Palace will share that one by about three points. And, you know, dare I say it, um, they have Colin Ryan on board who will punish any indiscretions that Brewery give within, what, 80 or <laughs> even up to 100 metres. Yeah, I've held us by one. Um, it's obviously a huge bonus having a player of the ilk of, of Colin Ryan. And even though it's completed com- competition, Puck at the hurling, it will be a boost to the club in general. And I absolutely, think that been... absolutely, sure. Look, it's a, it's a, it's a boost. Like, um, like the, the, the people talking about it around the county, it is even, even, even fantastic. Like, you know, um, like, um, you know, we win three all islands in the last four and now we scoop the, we, we scoop the puck father what's left. Yeah. We'll see. Well, for, for Colin Ryan, it's to win, uh, the county with palace green. Um, we'll see how that goes. Hmm. Croom versus Grana Ballingarry. I'm going. I'm going for Croom. I'm going for Croom by five points there. Croom by five. I'm going to go for Croom by three. Um, because I, I, you know, just to give you the rationale behind it, um, Grana Ballingarry just saved our skin last year by by um, um, w- w- winning the relegation playoff final against St Pat's. Um, like they 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 were they're, they're lucky to be that 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 they're not in 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 the mire again this year because um 
like they, they, they were looking to get over to the fall they lost they lost to brewery um now croom uh, uh, was a totally different animal altogether in that um, you know croom have been hovering around them um, jack they, they they were beaten in the they were beaten at um let me think they were beaten at the quarter final stage last year was it um by Fiona or the Piercing? Or no, they were beaten in the semi final by Newcastle yeah. West, wasn't it? I think they've been in, I think they're going for a fourth successive semi final, and there was yeah, a final. Yeah, appearance yeah. And, 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 and um, uh, there's, there's something about them this year that, that um, you know, they drew with Palace in the first round, and um, they, 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 they comprehensively beat Hospital Haberstown in the second round. Um, and um, I'm, I'm going for, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going for Croom by five there. Yeah, I said it's grown by three. Crokey Finney versus Napier Sheik. Now, I, I can't call between the sides Croker and the Crest of a Wave. Napier Sheik were last year's finalists. I'm going to mirror your, your answer here. So, I'm, I'm, I'm going for Croak. I think I think the momentum is with Croak. Um, I'm going for Croak by two points. It's going to be close. And the rationale behind it was you'd say, all right. Croke were in the junior um, A final last year. That Napier Street were in the intermediate final and only lost it after extra time. But they, they've lost a good number of players since. Um, yeah. Like w w w we're talking about some of the newcomers um, that 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 have come on the senior team and uh, are staking and really have their hands up for places after the first two rounds. We're talking about the, the like of Emmett McAvoy, Sean Long. Uh, Keith Dempsey, they were all key members of, of, of that team last year. Um, they have since um, lost Garod Sinnott, who has been promoted up, up, up to the senior team, came on as a sub in both games against Kilmallock and against Barry Brown. So they, they, they've left huge holes in the Napiersig um, in the Napier Sheik team, and I don't think has James O'Brien played in the championship yet. I don't think he has. Where, where, where he to be available, it would it would make a huge difference. I'm I'm not 100 percent sure on that, but but um, um, th that is why, and I feel that, that that there there is there is momentum with with um, 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 Croke Kilfinney yeah. and like Croke Kilfinney are after emerging Jack um, top of what is possibly the, the most competitive group in the competition. Because you you, you had Fiona who were beaten in the semi-final last year with whom they drew in the first round. And then you had Nakaderi who they beat in the second round. So like yeah. all the pointers are good towards Croke Kilfenny. And uh, um, yeah. I, I'm going for them to win the game by a couple of points. Yeah, I'm going to go from the Pearson then to win by a couple. Um, we've seen a lot of times teams coming back from losing a final, but it's different for the Pearson, as you rightly mentioned, to be losing players. It's generally a team's first team, but we'll see how that one goes. And then Effen versus Nakaderi to round out the predictions. I'm going with Effen. As am I. How many are you going for? I'm going for Effen by four. Effen by four. I'm going to go for Effen by two. Um, now, um, you know it. You, you can talk about the randomness of the draw and all that, but um, um, Effen in the group stages found, them, found themselves billeted in with Napiersik and Kilmallock, the very same two teams that they were in with last year. Okay. Um, but what a turnaround in 12 months. They lost to both of them last year. They beat both of them, and not only beat them this year, but beat them comprehensively. And and um, you, are, you, you, you have a certain guy playing with Effen called Nicky Quaid. <laughs> All the quads were playing with him, you know, and he he's leading up um, a trio of quads, um, the quad quad clan, but 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 very very importantly, and I I, I haven't seen him this year, um, is that um, it, it looks as if Patrick O'Donovan, who has won Munster minor medals. 2019-2020 has very, very satisfactorily made the transition as we expected he would from 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 minor to adult hurling. So um, a lot of the attention it will help to take a lot of the attention off off, off Nicky Quaid. Um, but apart from that, the, 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 there's a, looking. I was looking at that team sheet as as late as last evening, and and um, I I see a solidity about him, and I see potential in him. And and um, I I like I I actually at this point Jack would have even down as 
one of the likely candidates to win it out. Yeah, they're definitely one of the candidates, but I, I don't think you could rule out any of the, the eight teams remaining, really, could you? No, no, because like Nakaderi have credentials as well. No, don't get me wrong, Nakaderi no. have credentials. It, it's not a million years ago since they context, contested a county final against against them um, against them um, uh, Drummond Atlaka. Yeah, the Gaelic Clowns one evening about was it 2017, 2016? Back in you know Tom Condon is playing playing at centre back. You know you've 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 done handly of leaders in, in in the team. You know, um, Don O'Sullivan, Dermot O'Sullivan, like. A lot of very, very good players in 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 in, in, in Nakaderi, but I I have a sense that it may be a bridge too far for them this time. That that um it's it's a rejuvenated Effen side, like but like Effen have had a roller coaster existence, Jack, in in the last um in in the last since the turn of the um, since the turn of the decade, um in in twenty eleven, like in twenty ten, um county. Junior A champions for first adult county championship in 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 um, to go to Effen. Twelve months later, county intermediate champions made the transition immediately and beat mm. Bally Brown in the final. And not only that, but went on went on and won the Munster intermediate championship. And then they had three or four years at senior. Yeah, you know. And had some very very creditable performances there, and like that, that 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 there'd be a certain element of there'd be a certain number of players that Pat Carroll, Michael Ray, and those Darren Sheehy, <coughs> Indy Kelly, plus the Quades, of course, who would have that level of experience. So it, it, it was it was a question of a numbers game with him, and and um, get, get, getting the players in and waiting for um, some very exciting players that they have coming through. None more so than Patrick Donovan. So um, th th that's the rationale behind my thinking with 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 um, why F and up where they are. Yeah, look, if, as I said, any team could win it, but F and F definitely made, made a strong case early on. Um, I think that's it, Matt. We've looked forward to all the games. We've looked forward to the, the Hurling and the Camogie, Colin Ryan's win, the predictions. I don't think we're missing anything as we go into another busy, busy weekend. Did you say 26 games this weekend, Matt? 26 games. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot to digest there, isn't there? There's, there's a lot to digest. There's an awful lot to think about. There's an awful lot to keep track of, Jack. Yeah, well, look, we're, we're doing but our sure, best. We wouldn't be doing anything else, would we? No, and look, if apologies if, if me or Matt have missed anything today. Um, if we've missed it now, we'll have got it either on the paper or on the website. Um, everything will be covered. So a huge thank you again to you, Matt. And we'll yeah, talk soon. You know, it, it amuses me when we get it wrong. You know, you're the fella that'll come up. Hey, you got that wrong, you know. I, um, I know. Um, like the, um, uh, that rub, runs off me like water off a duck. So um, if, if that stopped doing it, it would be a good idea. Because, look, um, we, we're only calling it as we see it. You know? Yeah, look, if anyone says to me about predictions, at least I know that they're watching. So uh, yeah, and as as I said to a guy lately, you know, do, do you know what? Will you swap with me for next week? You go in and do them, and I'll. <laughs> we'll we'll do a we'll do a special guest show someday. But for mm -hmm. now, anyway, Matt, we'll leave it at one hour and eight minutes. A huge thank you for everyone tuned in, and we'll be in touch soon. And best You're of luck all this weekend. Good luck. Take care. The question again: We get old with what you put into. It's like a walk of life. If you're good enough, go and get it. No more about it. Your mother sends you down to the shop for a pound's worth of goods and she gives you 50 pence. You can't get the pound's worth of goods, can you? He's just about kept in. Oh, well, Todd Shorty Buckley. To do that to Tomas O'Shea, he deserves to score from here. One of the highlights of the second game. Let me spend out there from the war court today. No more about him. He made all the run that was it. Put the ball over the barrel, the fact that it, and that's it. No ifs, no buts. Is there much time left? No simple.